In this video I'm going to show how to remove the fan belt and replace it. This is on a John Deere X595, but basically it's going to be the same if you have a Yanmar three-cylinder diesel. I've had 455s which were a 22 horse Yanmar and it used exactly the same belt. I heard a little bit of a noise and I thought maybe the bearings in the alternator were going bad so I tightened up the belt it was a little loose and after I tightened it up I ran it a little bit and the belt came off so that's when I decided I need to replace it so to re replace it what you're going to need to do is first loosen up the alternator here and there's going to be a 13 millimeter bolt down here and a 13 millimeter on the top here you loosen those two and down here on the bottom of the uh, alternator there's a 15 millimeter. Loosen those three bolts so that your alternator can swing away. Uh, I also took the antifreeze overflow uh, canister off. It was a little bit in the way and there's only one screw that holds it on. Uh, you might not need to do it but I just thought I'd do it too so I could maybe get a little better view of the uh, fan and, and how you're going to replace that belt. It's B136370, which means it's 37 inches long. K means that it's Kevlar. So John Deere, the belts that they want you to use are Kevlar. John Deere also had a number A-923K6. And when I went to AutoZone, they had one of those in stock, but it was a serpentine belt for like a car or something. So the number that I would use is A36K, and like I said, I thought they were a little short, and so what I've actually done is I've ordered A36K37K, which is going to be an inch longer, and I just found that that worked better. So now I'm going to start to uh, show you how to put the belt on. To be able to get the belt around the pulley on the back of the engine, you're going to have to disconnect the drive shaft. The drive shaft has a rubber, they call it isolator, in between the drive shaft and the engine. And what there are, uh, there are three bolts in there. There are 13 millimeter bolts that you're going to have to uh, loosen them, take them out, and then try to push the drive shaft shaft back a little bit so you can slip the belt on. If you can't get it on, your other option is going to be to go to the drive shaft where it connects to the transmission and loosen that up. Okay, the bolts that are, are connecting to that rubber uh, isolator are, in my opinion, they're not exactly 13 millimeter. This is a 13 millimeter socket and it's a six-point socket, and it's actually, in my opinion, loose. These are very, very tight, and you're going to have to put a lot of pressure on them. So what I did is I went with a half-inch six-point socket, and it fit this nut very snug. I was a little bit afraid to, you know, strip these on the uh, machine, because if you did, it would be a nightmare to try to get these out. I remember the last time I did this, uh, I was questioning, you know, whether I was going to be able to get them out. But definitely you want to use the six-point socket, and in my opinion, the half-inch fits very snug, and that's what I would use. To be able to loosen those bolts, I had to take a vice grip to lock onto the drive shaft so that it wouldn't turn while I was trying to loosen the bolts. These bolts are on there very tight. They've never been off, so when you do go to remove them, you're going to have a pretty hard time. Once you've loosened the three bolts on that uh, rubber mounting on the drive shaft, then you need to get your fan belt around the fan and then have it pushed down and what you're going to have to do is slide it between that isolator and the uh, engine 
mounting where it's going to be bolting on there. And for some reason, this one, I've had trouble before where I had to actually take a screwdriver and try to pry those apart so I could get the fan belt in. But for some reason on this one, there's plenty of room and I'm just going to be able to slip it on and put those three uh, bolts back in there and then come up and finish reinstalling it on top. Before you put the belt back on, it'd be a good idea to check the water pump, see if you can spin the fan, make sure that the bearings feel okay in that, and also on the alternator. Uh, there are magnets in there, and when you go to uh, turn it, it's going to feel like, you know, it, it's hitting like bumps, and that's just the magnets. But just try to see if uh, the bearings are bad, changing the batteries in the alternator, Next time one of these go bad, I'm going to make a video of that, but it's pretty simple. It's not uh, just two bearings and take it apart and put it back together. So overall, this hasn't been that bad. I was able to get those three bolts out underneath, and the reason they were so hard uh, getting out is there was Loctite on them. So when you put them back together, uh, you might put a drop of blue Loctite on there and tighten them down. Uh, but that was probably the hardest thing about this whole uh, repair was just getting those three bolts out. You have to lay underneath the tractor to do it. When you're putting the belt on, you can actually get your hands in from the top here so that you can get it around the lower pulley and you don't uh, have to get underneath you know, to get that belt on there. But you are going to have to do a little work under the tractor getting those bolts out and moving the shaft around but that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. This is the belt that I took out and you can see it was, you know, getting pretty bad. One of the things you'll notice is the belt you take out doesn't look like the one I installed. This is actually what's known as a cog belt. The uh, V on the belt is actually got slits in it and the reason for that is if you're going around a smaller pulley, if you have a straight belt, they're not going to want to conform to the pulley. It's going to put a little more stress on that belt. So a cog belt is just when you have a larger pulley, you don't need it. But where it goes around the alternator, a smaller pulley, that's where, you know, they did have a cog belt. But the one they're now using is not a cog belt, and that's what I installed.